we finally have more information about Sargon and Tariq coming to Rise of Kingdoms. And yes, this information has been out for a couple of days, but I've been playing it safe, okay? Because Lilith sometimes doesn't like when we talk about these things a little bit too early, okay? So today we're going to go over all of the skills for Sargon and Tariq, and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on both of these, as well as some commanders that I'm planning on pairing with them. And I honestly think both of these commanders are better than people are making them out to be. So let me explain why. Now, of course, I did make this screenshot here of Sargon and Tariq. Okay. So this, they're not in the game at the time of me recording this. So if these skills, uh, you know, have a couple of words that are changed slightly when they do come into the game, I apologize. I'm working with what I got. Okay. And of course, when this information is officially revealed, and if this is completely wrong, I won't even upload this video. Anyway, Sargon is an infantry versatility and skill commander with an active skill rage requirement of a thousand for the next five seconds. Normal attacks will have a 100% chance to deal a 500 damage factor to the target so over time this is a damage over time five seconds 500 that's 2500 damage factor to a single target and a lot of people saw this skill and immediately were let down they were unhappy about this on sargon because they didn't see massive aoe they didn't see a big debuff and honestly i understand the disappointment but i think sargon is going to have a really important role in kvk and 2500 damage factor to a target is significant although i would rather just have a single nuke all in one turn so that way you don't have to worry about staying connected to that target who might be fleeing okay let's take a look at the second skill it's a passive skill that gives your infantry units 10% extra attack and 20% extra health. When attacking, this commander's troops has a 100% chance to inflict a stack of the amazed effect on the target troop, increasing their skill damage taken by 3% for 10 seconds with a maximum of 10 stacks. Now, this could be a mistranslation when this comes to the game it may not be called an amazed stack but this skill is a ton of value in a single skill i mean you're getting 30 percent of stats and you're getting a significant debuff to that target this is essentially the infantry version of tamiris and i wonder how this is going to appear if you're going to be able to see a target gaining those stacks just like with tamiris's little purple emblem i wonder if it's going to be the same emblem or if it'll look slightly different for sargon i wonder if this is going to stack with the poison debuff from tamiris because technically they're different debuffs because they're different stacks but they're also the same debuff so testing is going to have to be done here but this is really really interesting and part of the reason why i think sargon is way better than people are giving him credit for at first glance taking a look at his third skill infantry units led by this commander gain 15 percent march speed that's good infantry are slow they also deal 10 percent more damage to attacking troops normal attacks have a 10 percent chance to increase the total damage dealt by that commander's troops by 30 percent for three seconds eight second cooldown now this part here dealing more damage to attacking troops does that mean that if the army is running away you're not getting this 10 percent damage buff so in essence that army has to be at least hitting something actively in order to gain this or does this mean that your troops have to just be attacking meaning they won't deal 10 percent more for counter attack if you're running away I'm not entirely sure. My assumption is that the enemy will have to actively be hitting something in order for you to gain this damage effect, but 30% increased damage for three seconds. I mean, I know the cooldown is long, but I, you're going to have the damage from the active skill up like 50% of the time, if not more. And if we wanted to be insane, we could pair him with somebody like Zhang Yu and just break this first skill and just have it up all the time. But yeah, 30% damage bonus. I feel like that's going to be significant. And at first glance, again, it might be hard to calculate how that will play out but I do think that is significant his fourth skill increases the defense of infantry units by 10 percent while on the field when a targeted troop has received 10 stacks of the amazed effect all stacks are removed and the targeted troop suffers damage with a damage factor of a thousand in addition the troops of this commander receive a shield that lasts five seconds with 300 damage factor so this is where Sargon starts to get a little bit insane okay let me read his expertise and then we're going to go over his entire kit so his expertise reduces skill damage taken by this troop by 15 percent really solid when this troop is hit by a normal attack he has a 50 percent chance of inflicting two stacks 
of the amazed effect on the enemy target. If the skill is triggered when the commander's troops get a shield, it inflicts an additional stack of amazed. This can trigger once every eight seconds. So again, a rather long cooldown on that otherwise really good expertise. So let me just say, there's going to be a couple of ways that you can build Sargon. The first thing to note here is that with the fourth skill, this is actually removing the stacks in exchange for a damage factor. So what that means is if what you care most about Sargon is that debuff, one thing that you could do is build a five, 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 zero Sargon, not even unlock the fourth skill. And you're still going to get the 10% damage bonus, the 30% damage bonus the trigger. You're going to gain 20% health, 10% attack and the full benefit of the active skill with all the stacks. And those stacks are never going to be removed. I personally think that you should only build a five, 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 zero Sargon. If you're not planning on really using him that much, if you're really just a well looking for an, an additional way to guarantee a debuff, you could do that. Okay. I think that it's worth taking him to expertise. Absolutely. Because here's the thing with that expertise, you have the chance of inflicting three stacks in a single turn on top of the one stack that you're already going to be giving them. I mean, you're going to refill the stacks on the target so quickly that I feel like you're not really going to notice it be gone, even though they are all removed all at once. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about with Sargon is that this skill, how is this going to interact with multiple Sargons hitting a target? And I think this is where Sargon could get extremely broken if you have a lot of them swarming a particular flag. So if you have a bunch of whales and alliance with a bunch of Sargons that are expertise and you're all applying stacks to that target, are those stacks going to be additive in nature? So let's say you have three Sargons hitting, are they going to gain three stacks every single turn on top of the stacks that they could be getting from the expertise? I mean, how quickly could you get that target up to 10? And if they do get to 10, do they take that 1000 damage factor from all of the Sargons hitting them? So three Sargons swarming a flag, do they take 3000 damage factor from that? And then the next turn, they immediately have six stacks on top of that, right? Because when this, when this triggers, you gain a shield, which means they're going to take an additional stack and they're guaranteed a stack. There's also a chance of them getting two more. So three Sargons hitting with two stacks for that one turn. That's six stacks right away. I mean, they're going to get back to 10 immediately. So that's what we have to understand with this fourth skill. How is this going to work when there's multiple Sargons hitting a single target? Because if that single target takes a thousand damage factor from every Sargon and all of their stacks are adding together, I mean, he's going to be a swarming king. I, it's, it's actually insane. Okay. It's actually insane. Now, really quick. I do just want to briefly note that he is an infantry versatility and skill commander. And for me, I actually think I'm going to break up my Guan Yu and Scipio combo in favor of a Guan Yu primary with Sargon secondary. Now, the reason, let me explain, because right now I know Guan Yu CPO is an insane march. Okay. I know it's insane, but I think right now is the best time that we've ever got to separate these two. Like right now, yes, you can separate them into two solid marches, right? But you're kind of missing out. This is really the best march. But now I feel like Sargon is a really solid pair for Guan Yu. Is he as good as CPO? No, but I think he's like almost there and he's insanely good in his own right. Now, let me explain. Guan Yu's expertise says whenever he gains a shield, he also increases skill damage by 15% for three seconds. Well, great news. Sargon is giving you a shield on his fourth skill. He's also giving you a lot of what Guan Yu is lacking. Lacking, okay. He's giving you a little bit more attack, which Guan Yu already has a ton of, but he's giving you 20% infantry health and 10% infantry defense. So there's a little bit of the tankiness there that normally he gets from CPO right now, but now he's going to be able to get that same benefit from Sargon. And on top of that, because you're implementing these stacks to that target, it's going to make that target take way more skill damage from Guan Yu's primary skill, that massive AOE. And of course, Guan Yu has the skill tree. So the fact that you're going to be able to gain the benefits of the skill tree and the rage regeneration and all that good stuff for Sargon to make sure you're popping off as much of your active skills as possible is really, really critical. And I think this is going to be a really solid open field pair. I plan on maxing Sargon as soon as that third wheel is finished. I'm going to max spin the wheel every single time. If you guys didn't know, he is the wheel of fortune commander. I think he's going to be extremely good in the open field, even though 
he doesn't have a, a health debuff and he doesn't have an aoe yes that would be great for him to have but i think he's doing his own unique thing and it's really solid next let's take a look at Tariq here okay now he is the mightiest governor commander and he's infantry conquering and defense so here we have the same talent trees as pakal so could be a potential pairing there right off the bat we'll talk about that in just a little bit but real quick if you made it this far into the video i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps me beat that youtube algorithm okay so his active skill has a massive 2200 damage factor to a single target and if you are being surrounded you're going to deal an extra 300 damage factor to that target so this is i mean this is basically sargon's active skill except it's all on a single turn and you have to be getting hit by at least two enemies if you're not it's still an absolutely ridiculous active skill again when we first learned about these skills a lot of players saw this and were a little bit disappointed right because people wanted this to be the nevsky of infantry people wanted it to be a massive single target nuke with a really impressive debuff and we don't see that we just see a really massive nuke okay but it's not all bad and i do think i probably will expertise Tariq as well okay and let's talk about that second skill infantry units led by this commander gain 40 percent increased attack and deal 10 percent more damage to cavalry infantry also get 10% march speed outside of alliance territory so here we're seeing massive amounts of attack which is pretty common for conquering commanders and we've never seen this before and i don't know if this is a mistake but we've never seen a single commander give you 10% more damage to another troop type correct me if i'm wrong i can't remember a single time that that has been the case but this is a pretty solid counter to any cavalry that he can get his hands on and I think that that's significant because right now we're seeing way more cavalry in the open field than we ever have before. We're seeing, I mean, obviously Nevsky, Zhang Yu, Joan, William, they're insane, insane commanders. So this is going to be huge. His third skill is a conquering skill. This is for rallies only. When attacking cities or strongholds, infantry units led by this commander gain 30% increased defense and each normal attack has a 30% chance to reduce the target's attack by 30 percent for three seconds with an eight second cooldown so this skill i think is very good for rallies obviously it's the only time you can use it but as a rally skill i still think it's very good in general i honestly wish that we got the 30 percent defense here and the 40 percent attack for the rally because i would just prefer that in the open field but regardless i think a solid rally skill and a solid debuff to that target fourth skill troops led by this commander deal 15 percent more damage and have a 10 percent chance to reduce the target's rage by 80 for three seconds again eight second cooldown i don't know why they keep giving us eight second cooldowns man i, I feel like these i mean i guess it does keep these skills in check i don't know overall straight up 15 percent more damage we see that on nebu right another conquering commander i love to see it that's flat damage boys that is insane and his expertise deals direct damage to the target so this is basically a buffing his active skill it's a flat 2500 so again that's sargons but in a single turn it's it's hitting him with a truck if this commander's troops are surrounded the skill deals an additional direct damage to the target with a multiplier so it's 300 times the number of surrounding enemies with a maximum of 900 so that's 3400 damage factor nuke for a single turn which is absolutely ridiculous now let me pull that down for you it's not just for rallies but of course this will be exceptionally good for rallies as well i mean these two it, even if you pair them together i think they're really going to melt flags i think they're really going to deal a lot of damage now do i think that infantry is going to be the new rally meta probably not we've never really seen a significant infantry rally meta we just we've never seen it i don't think that's going to change here especially because calves and archers have such good rallies right now i don't think this will change the meta but this could be the best infantry rally that we have right now pakal herald is still the meta it's pretty much anti-swarmable it's extremely tanky here i think you could do a pakal Tariq and just be a ridiculous tank if you really wanted to there's gonna have to be a lot of testing done here to know exactly what the best infantry rally is going to be but we do know that we've got some massive tankiness now for me the reason i am planning on expertising Tariq most likely is because i actually think he's going to be good in the open field now you know a lot of people see this and they say there's no debuff there's no aoe therefore he's bad and guys I, I gotta disagree 
I got to disagree. First of all, the rage reduction here is solid. And, and I, I mean, 80 for three seconds, 240 rage. I think that's pretty solid, but you have to keep in mind, like what infantry have been using in the open fields up until now, right? Is Tariq as good as Nevsky or Joan? No. Is Sargon as good as Nevsky or Joan? I also don't think so. I mean, he has his unique swarm thing, which I think will be insane. So maybe he will be, but realistically, I don't think either of these commanders are on that level. But the reason that I'm planning on expertise in Tariq is because I think this is going to be the pair for CPO. Now I'll probably do CPO primary Tariq secondary because they complement each other so well. I mean, Tariq gives you the 40% of infantry attack that normally CPO is getting from Guan. He's also gaining a massive single target nuke. He's gaining 15% more damage for your CPO and you're going to be melting cavalry. And you got to keep in mind when he is expertise, that 2,500 damage factor as a secondary is going to hit the target during the debuff window for CPO's active skill. We're talking about the three second health debuff here. So they're going to have 30% reduced health and then just get hit by a truck. It's going to be crazy. Plus the 15% all damage. And I know I'm blocking it here, but CPO's expertise gives you 10% extra skill damage on top of all that. So I think CPO and Tariq is going to be a really interesting open field combo. And then that leaves your Herald to pair with a call or Alex or whatever you want to do. And that's three solid infantry marches. I think now I feel like I've explained why I think these two commanders are pretty significant in their own right. But the other reason why I think both of these commanders are definitely worth considering expertising, maybe not Tariq for a lot of people, but almost certainly uh, Sargon for a majority of infantry players is because you have to consider what infantry are using right now. Okay. The best infantry March is Guan with CPO. But then when you start to look at what are the other options that infantry have for open fields, you don't really get that much okay Harold yes Harold is great I love Harold I use him all the time but Pakal Harold is only really effective if you're actually getting hit by by other players right you have to be getting swarmed by with these two in order to deal maximum effectiveness and at this point a lot of people know to not hit the Pakal now that doesn't mean he's bad I actually think Pakal Harold is still a really good open field March people can disagree with me if they want to but I think time and time again they do deal significant damage to those that are hitting them obviously since Pakal came out we've seen a, a ton of power creep for calves and uh, for archers as well so maybe he's not as good as when he first came out but I still think Pakal Harold is really a really solid pair and still probably the best pair for Harold. Although we'll have to wait and see, but what do we have besides that? I mean, you could make the argument that that's like what one and a half meta marches, right? If you count Pakal Harold as half infantry players are still using Martel. People are still using Alex, right? And we love Alex, but he's definitely showing his age and he desperately needs that relic to bring him up to a season of conquest commander because he's been outclassed for so long. Shook is, he's okay. I would say he's average, but when you compare him to what cavalry have and what archers have, I just don't think he adds up. I have him at five, 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 one, and I kind of just left him there because I, I just don't get use out of him. I mean, for Christ's sakes, people are still using Guan Leo. I don't care what anyone says, boys. Guan Leo has not aged well. Okay. That, that pair has not aged well. It's extremely slow in the open field. And there've been, there's been so much power creep in, in the archer and the cavalry camp that this this combo to me just doesn't cut it i haven't used leonidas in a very long time he's he's just not he doesn't add up anymore okay i would rather use Duan alex if i really had to so that's why when we take a look at Tariq and we look at sargon you can't write them off you can't write them off because they are just better than a lot of what we have for infantry in the open field right now even sargon who you know maybe is a little bit underwhelming for the open field i mean he's he's, he's better than leo he's better than martel i would say for open field he might be better than pakal okay so regardless for infantry players these are both a pretty substantial improvement in my opinion now should you invest in these commanders uh, obviously i'm recording this at a time where we don't have testing so i can't say i i have no idea if i were to guess though i would say that if you are not an infantry player then you probably still want to go with Guan CPO. I think if you're just, if you're not an infantry player, you want one infantry March, 
Juan CPO is the way to go. You probably don't need these two commanders. If you are an infantry player, Sargon is probably a must have. I, I think he, he might be a must have. I mean, it's going to come down to how the stacks work with the fourth skill. And if you can really swarm stuff down with that, because that's going to be insane. I think Sargon is, is significant. His damage factor is going to be insane. Even with it being over time, I still think he's going to be really good for infantry players. And then for those of you who are really late game infantry, who have a lot of other slots already filled, you've, you've finished your cavalry march you finished your archer march is Tariq someone to invest in he might be worth considering anyway guys with that being said if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton subscribe to the channel if you're new here and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video i would love to hear your thoughts on these two commanders in the comments section below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on we will talk to you guys again soon peace